My next guest is the in-house voice of the Raptors, chaplain of the Toronto Argonauts and co-chaplain of the NBA champions, the Toronto Raptors. But his faith is what he is most passionate about sharing. Welcome, Herbie Coon, to 100 Hot Lake Street. Upstairs. I Good almost to like me. my arm just almost <laughs> fell off because of that ring. Uh, Let's get a close-up of this thing. Now, this is not the Raptors ring. This is no, the Argos ring. This is a 2017 you, Grey Cup ring for the Toronto Argonauts. And yes. you are getting your Raptors ring tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. So yes. How, what, what, I'm where, excited. What? Finger, are you gonna put it on? Yeah. You're just gonna be like walking around like I've got, this. I've got, I've got it sized for the ring finger. Do It'll you? be a 13 and a half. So, so do you yeah, alternate? Big digits. One day you'll wear the Argos. One day you'll wear I'll be the honest Raptors. with you, Meg. I very rarely wear them. Do I you? very rarely wear them. I'm, you know, it's it's not exactly something you want to wear going to the grocery store. It's or something that gets a little True. bit too much attention. <laughs> but I figure, you know what? I'm gonna be on national TV right. with Maggie John on Huntley Street. I'm bringing out the You're bling today. It it's out. that simple. Absolutely. Okay, let's go back to last season. Yes. As the voice of the Toronto Raptors, what was it like having a front row view of yeah. history unfolding? Yeah. It was extremely exciting. Yeah. And I think the word that comes to my my, my soul, my experience the most is gratifying. Mm. So it was Appreciate so gratifying it. and satisfying wow, after yeah. having invested <clears throat> so many people having invested so much energy and so much skill and so much expertise and so much sacrifice to see that come to fruition with a championship was really, really wonderful. So for me, having been there since day one, yeah. so last year was my 24th season, this season is my 25th season with the team, I was just yeah, so satisfied. It was very rewarding. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of people, when you're involved in pro sports, people take great pleasure in analyzing and breaking down and criticizing the moves of every general manager or president or coach. And Masai had, over the last years, come under, you know, whatever form of critiquing of the moves and trades and decisions he's made. And I I'm just so proud of the guy. You know, he, he made the calls that he needed to make, make. some of them were tough ones. <clears throat> but who's going to argue now? Yeah. We're NBA. We're the reigning NBA champions. Nobody's going to argue with that. And the other word I've got to use is unifying. Mm. How often do you have fans in Halifax yes. and Calgary and Regina and Vancouver yeah. across the country cheering for a Toronto right. team? When's the last time that happened? When the Blue Jays won the World right. Series, yeah. 92, 93, no, right? right? Yeah. That's it. So for me, and now in this at you know this day of social media, mm. for me to see. Crowds of 20, 30,000 people gathering outdoors to watch the games on screens in Mississauga and in Halifax and all these cities across the country. Everyone cheering for the Raptors. Yeah. Oh, just so wonderful, so exciting. Tell me about being a chaplain for some of these big teams yeah. and, and just bringing the faith element, reminding athletes that, yeah, God is at the center of all of this. God is the author yes. of the talents and the skills that you are using to, to build your career yeah. and, to, and to earn your salary and to influence other individuals. The biggest thing that, that, that we deal with as chaplains, Maggie, if I may speak on behalf of my, my other chaplains across the association and across the CFL, is identity. Mm. Is, is an athlete's identity who they believe themselves to be at their core. Mm. And so many athletes have spent their entire lifetimes as you know the man or the one, the go-to person, right? They were the go-to person on their high school team. They were the go-to to person on their university or college team, then they get to the pros and they're at the end of the bench, or they have an injury and they're sitting out for a number of games or half a season, or hopefully it never happens, occasionally a season or a career ending injury. Mm. And when that happens, and if your identity is completely centered around, hey, I'm so-and-so and I play this sport, right. then guess what, who do you, and what do you lean on? Do you lean on the friends, you know, your fair weather friends who wanna be around you mm -hmm. when everything's going well? Do you re lean on your bank account? Well, yeah, that can help for, for a time and, at least, but it's not gonna satisfy what's on the inside. Yeah. And so as chaplains- And what happens when you get injured? Yeah, exactly. And no one's interested in you anymore. Absolutely, and all, this, all of a sudden you're then? no longer today's news, now you're right. yesterday's news. And so, you know, one of the things that you and I were talking about earlier is I delight when a young player comes into the league and decides to make chaplaincy, d d d delights in making our pregame chapels part of his or her regular routine. Mm -hmm. And when they get that figured out from the, from the get-go, from the onset of their career, it makes a big difference in being able to handle mm -hmm. the adversities mm -hmm. that inevitably will come. 
not may come. Jesus said in this world, you will have trouble. And it's the same thing in sports. You will have adversity, whether it's an injury, whether it's the naysayers, whether it's the media, whether it's your own teammates, mm -hmm. sometimes your own family right. asking for this and this and this because you make a lot of money. You're going to have issues. Yeah. What are you going to lean on? Yeah. That's the question. And so we bring Christ into the mix. We bring the scripture into the mix. We open up the word. We, we share from a specific, specific passage or a specific theme that's relevant to the athlete today in 2019. Mm -hmm. You're speaking from experience. You grew up in church. Your mom took yeah. you to church. But there was a time in your life where you were searching for purpose and oh, searching for identity absolutely. as well. Absolutely. <laughs> to put it politely, I spent a number of years, teenage and young adult years, mm. pursuing everything that the world had mm. to offer. And while temporarily pleasurable and while temporarily satisfying, they were certainly not long-term solutions. Mm. And they were certainly not the solutions that leave you feeling at peace with your maker when you're lying in your bed at the end of the night staring up at the ceiling. Right. And so it was on November the 3rd, 1996 mm. at Grant, African Methodist Episcopal Church, AME <laughs> Church, Woodbine and Gerard, yeah. where I gave my life to Christ, yeah. responded to the altar call that morning. And he, here, here's what changed. So we, we know all about the big spiritual things, forgiveness, yeah. and, and those are wonderful, yeah. don't get me wrong. But for, for me, it was about, okay, I've been living for me, I've been using my talents for me, mm. the voice that God has given me. Mm -hmm. It's not like I chose it. Hey, mm -hmm. Lord, I'll take the deep one, please. <laughs> Didn't work out that way. And now everything readjusted, I recalibrated, yeah. if you will. Lord, this voice, these talents, mm. this boldness to step in front of loud crowds, mm. this confidence to share in front of groups of people, instead of using it for patting myself on the back, now I want to use it for your kingdom. Wow. And that perspective changed everything. Lord, I want to do this for you, for your glory. You direct my career. You direct where you want me to go. And I'll be, I'll try my best to be content yeah. with whatever decisions you make, Lord. Yeah. As we talk about identity and journey, uh, you and your wife also went through a time of infertility. Yep. And found your son in South Africa around yes. this time, around yes. Christmas time yes. as well. And I just think, again, when you're ministering to people and you've had so much life experience, mm. you're able to show people, you know what, I've been there. I can understand the struggles you're going through. Yeah, it's, it's about empathy. Chaplaincy yeah. is about being able to walk in the steps. It's, it's, it's doing what Jesus did. Yeah putting himself into their circumstances, into, into the real life experiences of the beggars, of the blind people, of the crippled, of the, the cast outs, the prostitutes, the tax collectors. And through the experiences that I have gone through as an individual, mm. the experiences that Stephanie and I have gone through as a husband and wife, mm -hmm. and the experiences that we've gone through as a family, absolutely, I tap into those. Yeah. I tap into those and I say, Hey, you know what? You're 22 years old, you're 23 years old, and you think your life is falling apart. I know how you feel. Yeah. Let me share with you one of my experiences. Even though I'm 50 now, it wasn't that long ago. And, you know, some circumstances wasn't that long ago within the last couple of years where our hearts have been broken as well. Mm -hmm. And when you're able to say, I've been in that kind of pain, mm -hmm. it makes the message and the and the one-on-one -on -one all that much more relatable yeah. all that more personal what have you learned about god through the journeys and the ups and downs faithfulness mm. faithfulness yeah whenever you think he's not there mm -hmm. whenever you feels like everything has hit the wall and you don't know what there is to cling on to. You don't feel like, you, even if there is, you're not even sure if you actually want to keep reaching. Yeah. You're, you're at that point of wanting to give up and you're at that point of desperation. I have learned the most important thing in life is never stop walking forwards. Mm. Always put one foot in front of the other, even when you want to give up, even when you want to mail it in, even when you're dealing with mental illness, been there, yeah. even when you've thought about taking your own life, been there. Yeah. Don't stop. Mm. Keep, sometimes faith looks like just putting one foot in front of the other. And when we are determined by God's grace and by the power of his Holy Spirit to keep putting one foot in front of the other, he has promised to meet us in mm. that point of desperation. Mm. And I can't explain to you with words in the English language how he does it mm. or what that 
sensei, all I know is that the next day I'm still here. Yeah. <laughs> and then the next day I'm still here. And then there's purpose. And then there's something to move forward for. And then there's something that stirs your spirit again. And then next thing you know, you're back and you've got some momentum going again. Well said, Mr. Kuhn. Thank you so much. Thank for you being so with us much, today. my friend. Greatly appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, oh, can we do another one of these? Yes, of course. There ow, we go. Ow. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs>